We are going live one more time. All right, so still getting drop frames, but kilobit per second is doing pretty well. I had to use the home, had to use the home internet. Now for, for streaming wise, I've been using a hotspot. This is what I've been using, hotspot, a dedicated connection. You know, my internet would be my internet, and this would be my streaming. But, but for some reason, this has, I mean, I don't know what's going on with this thing. It was doing great, but now it's crapping out on me. It's like, <sighs> these ISPs, Verizon, Spectrum, they downgrade your internet so bad. You pay so much money, and they kind of throttle your internet. So... First try, I was using this. For those who are joining, I was using this. I, I typically use this for my dedicated streaming. It's not part of my network. Different connection, two different connections. This is dedicated just for streaming. But for today, Verizon, it's been acting up. So I had to connect directly to hardwired into my Spectrum, and it looks healthy, getting a lot of kilobits per second, a couple of drop frames, but it wasn't that bad. All right. Awesome. So let's get straight to it. Welcome back to episode 67. Hopefully you guys are able to see me and hear me for those individuals that were here at the very beginning. I had some internet problems like I was just explaining right now, um, but we're back. So I'm going to go straight into it. You saw the title of today's episode, change the local admin password with PowerShell. So let me kind of build the scenario for you. Um, I had a job site. They did an audit. Uh, apparently, when they did an audit, they saw that the password, uh, the auditors, saw that their local password wasn't changed for many, many, many years. So rather than implementing Windows Labs to cycle through the local admin passwords, and you got to go inside Active Directory to get the password for that computer object, that's the easy route, right? And I've done Windows Labs tutorials for you guys. Hopefully, you guys are checking that out. Um, and share in that video. I did one for Windows environment if you want to do it locally and then I also did it with Windows Intune and push out that policy to your computers. Now this particular organization did not want to use Windows Labs. I do not know. Don't ask me why. Uh, but they just wanted the local admin for all the computers change for with this with this particular password. So uh, only way that I knew how, rather than going to each computer and logging in local and then changing the password, let's script it. it makes life easy. So I'm gonna show you guys what I did. So let's switch to the desktop. Hopefully you guys are able to see my desktop. And we're gonna go straight right into it. So I'm going to click on start. I'm gonna do ISE. I'm gonna right click on it and I am going to run as an administrator and I'm gonna click yes. So let's run this as an administrator, let it load up. We're gonna to go to PC02 because PC02 for this scenario, for this example, again, you're able to do it to many computers, but for this example, I'm gonna do it for only one computer. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do it for like many computers because the organization that I had to do this for had about, oof, about 500, 500 PCs. So imagine doing this manually no 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 we're gonna script it so for this example pc02 i'm gonna I'm gonna log in as an administrator uh I'll, this organization did not have administrator administrator enabled they actually had it disabled uh, a lot of companies do this this is best practice N disable the administrative account and create your own local admin uh, account and have a password for that for this organization they actually had administrator enable for all the machines and that's what we're tackling for this example you are able to change the coding that i am going to show you guys and again as always i'm going to provide the script at my github and hopefully if i remember place a link at the description and you know pin the comment so you guys can grab a copy of that uh so this account right here that i'm on or this computer i'm going to log in as an administrator and i'm going to show you the password because we're going to change this. So this is the password, right? P, capital P, at 55, 
W0RD. That's the password. I'm going to vet it with you guys. I'm going to hit. Oh, did I change it? Did I change the password? I think I changed the password. Do I remember what the password was? Let's see. Quack, quack. Uh, I forgot the password. What's the password? Oh, no, 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 no. I think, I think, if I remember, I think, <laughs> yeah, administrator is actually locked within my little lab, so I can't use that. But the organization that I was dealing with, they actually had administrator enabled for this. With this in mind, man, I'm actually going to reset BTNHD because be it. BTNHD is the local account which has the administrative password, uh, the administrative rights. So that's the one that we want to change. Again, best practice is, damn, fire truck. Do you hear the fire truck? I hear it. If you, if I hear it, you definitely gotta hear it. So that is the password, capital P at five five. The only difference is is that uh, the administrative account. If I go to computer manage, the administrative administrator account is disabled right for the person that i had to deal with they uh had administrator enabled for my environment i don't have it i try to i try to within your lab you should practice best practice within your lab so i have administrator disabled which you everyone's supposed to have that but you got a local account boom hackers or someone that's tried to infiltrate your infrastructure your environment are typically hitting this if they don't know what local account you have you know it's going to take forever but for this example this is what i want to change the password and i already show you guys the password it is capital p at five five w zero rd that is the default password so we're going to change that but imagine me changing that to multiple machines i don't want to do that manually so i'm going to show you guys how to do it with powershell so i'm going to log off this machine we're going to head back to pc zero one uh, because i'm going to script everything there and we're going to run it on pc01 remotely and it's going to hit pc02 so let's head back over here and let's start now i love declaring variables it's really up to you how you want to customize your coding but i am going to declare a variable called computer so hopefully you guys are able or computers because it's going to be multiple computers and we are going to do a get content, hit the tab to autocomplete, open and close quotations. And this is going to be a path of where this text file is going to be the list of all of our computers. So we got to do a little bit of legwork, right? We have to create this text file. Once you've got this text file already created, it's going to grab this information and just run the script and then change the local password. So. I already have a local directory, which is C colon and BTNHD temp. And then backslash, and let's call this file host. You are able to call it whatever you want. It is gonna be a T, uh, TXT file. Now, this file, you have to credit your manually. I don't have this file, and I'm gonna show you guys. I don't want you to think that I'm pulling uh, tricks and stuff so let's go inside the c drive let's go inside btnhd i do have that folder in there and i don't have host so i'm going to right click and i'm going to go to new and i'm going to go to text and let's give it host because that's the name that i gave it within powershell and enter there's nothing in it all right blank we're just created together so there's no trickery or you know hocus pocus but in each line, you're going to establish the name of the computer object. For the one that we want to change would be PC02 and BTNHD. Uh, I've seen best practices within this text file, establish the full qualified domain of all your computers. And if you have multiple, just hit enter in each line. Each line is basically gonna have a new computer object. You're able to do a PowerShell script to get all the computer objects and push them out into a CSV file or a text file, and then you're good to go. If you want me to show you guys how to do that, I'll show you guys on the next episode. But for now, we're gonna create it manually. So because I'm tackling only one computer, this is it right here. I'm gonna go file, save as, and we're done on that part, bingo. So let's close that up, and we are actually able to run this right now. So let's run it, 
And if I call out dollar sign computers, it should push out pc02.btnhd.edu. All right, so we're good. Now, the next thing that we need to do is uh, I'm gonna create another variable. It's gonna call password. And I'm going to assign this with the following. I'm gonna do a read host, right? And then I'm doing going to do open and close quotations. And inside the open and close quotation, inside the open and close quotations, we're gonna insert text. It's up to you. I'm gonna say enter new and then password. Pretty, pretty self-explanatory, right? And then get outside of it, and we're going to do a parameter of as a secure string. Now, the next thing that I'm going to create would be decode. And I actually got this uh, decoded password equals two. Now, I actually got this information from a PowerShell friend. He's a guru. He knows what he's talking about. And I was trying to ask, I was trying to like argue with him. He knows this stuff and it's, it's like a battle. I'm still learning PowerShell, but when I asked him to help me out with this PowerShell script, he he did line three to decode decoded password. He gave me this gibberish stuff, and I was like, "What's the point of this?" He kind of explained it. I was, we was going back and forth, and I was like, "Okay, whatever." So I still used it. I'm not gonna type it because it's pretty long. Uh, I'm gonna copy and paste it because uh, I already have it in my notes. I'm not gonna drive myself crazy on it, uh, but. When I provide you the script, you guys are going to have it. I forgot the main reason of why he stated to add this to the script, but it's weird, but whatever. I'm not going to argue about it. It just works. So this is what it is. Okay. It basically takes the secure string from line two and then decodes it into plain text. Don't ask me why you need this. Again, like I said, I asked a friend of mine that deals with PowerShell a lot. He helped me out with the scripting. And when I was trying to challenge him, but what's the point of it? He gave me a huge explanation. I was like, okay, whatever. But it just basically takes the encrypted secure string that you enter on line two. And then line three kind of decodes it for the rest of the PowerShell. Okay. So enter enter on line five we on, on line five we're going to establish a for each so the for each is actually going to grab the content on the computer's variable enter it into an empty container and then start establishing and then changing the password so we are going to do a for each yeah for each uh open and close parentheses we're going to give it a wiggly bracket to start it off and inside the parentheses we're going to declare a variable let's call it computer computer in computers because okay so whatever's inside computers which is line one we're grabbing that content from the text file that content inside computers is going to get placed inside computers Right, it's like a loop for each loop. Okay, now hit enter, and within here, it's all up to you of how you want to organize your coding. You are able to hit a tab, but again, I can't tell you what's best practice. If you if you want to hit a tab, go for it. For me, I'm not going to hit a tab. So on line six, I'm going to declare another variable because at the end of this, I want a nice little report sent to me in email, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that with PowerShell as well. So that's an extra bonus. Uh, so we are going to do a dollar sign and it's going to be is online because I want to know whether or not the computer was online. If it was offline, boom. So is online, it's going to equal to, um, if it's online, or it is online is going to equal offline, right? Uh, the status, Open and close quotations. Status is going to be success. Just check this out. Don't worry about it. I know is online is offline. I know it's kind of weird, but when we're going to test whether or not the computer is online, if the computer is online, that is online variable that we just declared as number six is going to switch to online, even though we declare offline. That's just the the temporary. Um, uh, variable for you 
temporary, how do you call it? Data inside the variable. I think I, I say for line eight, made a mistake. For line eight, we're going to do another variable of status error equals to open and close. And inside there, we're going to do failed. Failure, failed, all right? Hit enter. Now we are going to create an if and else statement. This is going to test whether or not the computer is online or offline. So to do that, we're gonna do if, let's do a little tab, if, open parentheses, another open parentheses, and we're going to use a commandlet uh, called tests. Uh, connection. Auto tab that. A uh, parameter of computer name. Now the computer name you would think it would be computers. No, it would be the variable of computer. Damn, all these fire trucks. It's like crazy. I know if I hear it, you definitely got to hear it. It's a lot of craziness is happening around here. So we're going to take this variable because remember, computers that's being grabbed from line one is being dropped in here. So it's only taking one individual um, computer object or computer name inside that text file and then dropping it in here. Eventually it's gonna drop it in here, okay? So what we're gonna do is another variable of count. We're going to do a one and we want to do another variable of error action and that's set to that to zero. So we're gonna close we're going to close the parentheses. Boom. We're going to hit enter. And we're going to do a wiggly bracket because we need to do more information inside the if. Now, if the connection is successful, meaning I'm getting a pin, that means uh, dollar sign is is equal now is equal to what? Right. If the connection is successful, meaning I'm pinging the machine and it's coming up as it's online, is online is changed to one. Remember, we had is online on, on six offline. So now because we're testing out the connection to make sure whether it's offline or online, if it is online, we need to change the variable to online, right? And then from here, we're going to close the parentheses, beautiful. And then from line 13, or you can hit enter to do the if and else, it's up to you. I'm gonna leave it in line 13. We're going to do else. Else, if it's not online, let's do else, right? If it's not online, what's gonna happen? Else is dollar sign status. I'm gonna call that status error variable that we created is equal to open and close parentheses, and then wiggly bracket to close it. Now, inside the wiggly, inside the double quotations, we're gonna add the following. We're going to do, I believe, is a tilde. I think that's a tilde, or I forgot the name of it. No, a tilde is the wiggly line. So it's, I, I always forget what that little line is. So it's right next to the one, right? I always forget the name of it. So we're gonna do dollar sign, computer, computer is offline. So that's your else. Okay. And we are need to do a T. Cool. Excellent. All right. So we just close it. Boom. Let's hit enter. Let's go back. And then we're going to try. Now the try is where you're actually going to change the password. So if the computer is actually online, great. Go to the try and the try is actually going to change the password. Uh, if it's not online, it hits the else, it's offline, all right, boom, it's a failure. It's going to do a catch, which I'm going to show you guys the catch, and it's going to fail, and it's going to continue to the next computer. So now we're going to establish a try. Hit enter, open, wiggly brackets, hit enter again, let's do a space. Now we're going to declare a variable of user. We need to declare the user that we're going to change the password. So we're going to do equals. And again, we need to do a open and close brackets and we're going to do a DSI and it open quotations and then close quotations. Now inside here, we're going to enter the following win NT colon backslash backslash. No, actually forward slash forward slash uh, dollar sign computer. Right. 
computer um, forward slash forward slash now here if you are using the administrative account you add administrator I'm not using administrator so I'm using BTNHD because that is my local admin account that I have enabled okay if you are using the administrative account which best practice it's not a good thing to have you want to disable it and use something else but for me I am using this so I want to change the password for that now we're going to hit enter now from here we're going to do a dollar sign and we're going to do user we're going to do a period inside the user account we want to uh use a um what is a function and it's going to be set oops set password open and close uh parentheses inside there we're going to do double quotations inside of double quotations we're actually going to use the decode variable so let me bring this down a little bit okay perfect awesome so now we're going to rather than me typing it out let's just copy and paste it so i won't make any mistakes all right bingo awesome beautiful now let's hit enter and we're going to declare another variable so we're going to do status error right status error even we even though we declared it in line eight we are able to declare it again but it's we're able to change what we assign to it within this try loop uh try and open and close parentheses and we're going to type in admin password was changed uh, changed successfully hopefully i spell that right boom okay let's get out of that hit enter and we're going to close the try now that we have a try if it wasn't successful something has to happen it has to catch something so let's hit enter and i'm going to backspace a bit i'm going to have a catch hit enter do a wiggly hit enter hit a tab this is where we get fancy with the coding a lot of people don't like to do tabs i've seen a lot of people have all this all together like this some people don't like doing tabs but this kind of keeps everything organized now catch now with the catch if i wasn't able to change the password um it has to catch something so that means the status we're able to call out the status uh variable and even though we told status was equal to success in line seven the catch has to change to something else okay so it's going to change to what the failed it didn't work out it was just trash it just did not work out we're going to hit enter we're actually going to call the status error and equals to open and close and that's going to be dollar and underscore so whatever error it retrieve we will see it what is all this noise it's like it's crazy like super noisy everywhere it's like i have to soundproof my home um hit enter let's close the catch with a wiggly bracket awesome and then in here, it's getting, it's getting crazy. Is it me? It's like they're doing construction around here. Now within here, I want to create a report, right? I want to push everything out. I want a nice little report telling me what was successful and what was not successful. So we want to push it out into a CSV file, like a spreadsheet or something like that. So within still within the for each because we're still in here and we haven't closed that yet i'm going to declare a variable core report equals to that's driving me nuts let me see if i can close some of these doors
driving me nuts. That's crazy. It's like Saturday. Like, come on, people. All right, sorry, I'm back. Sorry about that. It's the noise, like, beep, beep. Like, seriously? Just back the back up. The hell? All right, so back into this. Sorry. Um, yeah, so we declared a variable report. We're still within the for each loop. And I want to create this nice little spreadsheet so I can see all the computers that were offline or successful during the process of changing the password. So we're going to we're going to declare this variable report and we're going to assign it to the following command. So it's going to be new object. Oops. New object. Hit tab. We're going to use the parameter of type name. It is going to be PS object another parameter of properties we're going to do an at symbol and a wiggly now the at symbol and opening it, uh, a wiggly bracket uh, we're going to create a hash table so we're going to hit enter here i'm going to tab it to make it nice and clean and the the hash table is going to have computer name if i can spell it right computer name computer name is actually going to be assigned to dollar sign computer right not computers computer because that is we're still within the for each that's grabbing the content within computers right and then we're going to declare another thing is online assign that to dollar sign is online hit enter we're going to do password change status is equal to dollar sign status enter and detail this will give us the status ever whether or not it was offline or something else happened status detail is equal to status error okay hit enter and within here we are able to close our hash table awesome once we close our hash table, let's hit enter a couple times. Let's go back and see if I can go down a little bit. Awesome. Again, we are still within our for each loop. So now we created this nice little hash table. We need to push out the content that we got within reports and then push it out into a spreadsheet. So we need to do the following. We're going to call out our variable. Where am I? call our variable report right we're going to pipe it right and we're going to do select object and it's going to be computer name right basically everything that we declared within the hash table okay so it's going to be the, uh, the computer name is online it's going to be password password change status and then detail hopefully i can spell right detail status we're going to pipe that and we're going to do export csv excellent we're going to do a parameter of uh, a pin awesome and a parameter of path path and then open and close quotations now inside the open and close quotation you're going to give it a path so let's uh see c colon backslash btnhd i'm going to use this folder awesome backslash and let's give it a name so i'm going to do local uh pwd report right underscore zero four today's day what zero six uh two oh four dot csv now if we go inside this folder i don't want you guys to think that i already have that in here and if i do i could just delete it uh because i did test everything out before i tried it so let me zoom in i don't have that local pwd which pwd stands for password report i don't have it in here so i don't want you guys to think oh yeah you already have it in there it's definitely that's why it worked but i don't have it in there it should be created when we run this so now we are able to hit enter 
and then we are finally able to close our for each so the script is done finito okay uh, i am going to open up notepad all right and within notepad let me see zoom in a bit notepad let's change the password to the following password yep it's the same one but let's do 2024 pound that's the new password that i want to provide the local admin okay and we're going to try it again we're going to try it again so let's go back in pc02 because pc02 is the one that we want to change so the, the original password is this one and i'm going to show you guys that is the original password okay the new pass that the new password that i want to change it is this i want to confirm it that this is what it's you know what it has now we're going to hit it's welcoming it's going to log me in great that's awesome it's still on the old password now i'm gonna let that load in i'll log in this is what i want to change that old password to this so let's copy it make sure i copy it copy it let's minimize this okay it's logged in let's lock me out come on sign out beautiful and sign out come on awesome now so let's run this so i'm going to do a control a to highlight everything and let's run it boom got a nice little fancy little dialog box to enter the password i'm going to zoom in a bit and i'm just going to do a control v because the password i copied it from the notepad and let's click ok let's zoom out to see what happens <gasps> no what happened let's see let's see ah spell computer wrong womp, womp. computer I spelled it wrong again. Yeah, computer, computer. Yeah, I spelled it wrong. So let's do that one more time. Boom, did it create the, did it create? Yeah, it actually created. I don't know why, because it didn't work. So let's delete that. Let's remove that. Let's run it one more time. Boom, uh, control V, because I still have it in the clipboard. Let's click okay. It's running. Give it some time. Because it's still, even though it's one machine, it still needs to do what it needs to do. And then once it completes, we're able to check our report. And the report should tell us whether or not it was successful or if it was offline or this. And another way to vet it would be using that new password that we gave it. Hopefully I can remember. It's 2024 pound. And yeah. So let's give it some time. Let's give it some time. Okay, it's completed. So we got two ways to vet this. One, let's check out the spreadsheet. The spreadsheet will tell us whether or not it was successful. Another way would be to actually use the new password with PC02. But I want to show you guys what the spreadsheet will look at look like when you actually have it. And imagine, like, this is a nice spreadsheet. You have everything. Uh, everything. So this is how it looks. I'm going to select everything and double-click on one of them, and then boom. So this is how the spreadsheet looks. It's pretty freaking fancy. So it was success. That's great. You're probably saying to yourself, okay, it was successful. It was online. Duh, it's online because it did the test connection. It's definitely going to give you that, the, you know, it was online, right? Uh, this could be like nonsense, but the real, the real test is to actually go inside PC02 and vet it with the new password. And that's what we are going to do. Now, imagine doing this to 500 machines, which is awesome. Uh, I'm gonna show you guys how to actually script it, take the report and email it to you once it is done. So let's say you do this after five o'clock and you gotta go home at 5.30. You're not gonna wait until everything is done. So if you have like a, an additional code within your script to mail you the spreadsheet once it's done hey when you're going home driving or you in the bus or taxi or train or whatever you get that email oh it's done you're able to see what was offline and then troubleshoot on the next morning 
which I'm going to show you guys how to do that. But let's go inside PC02 and let's log in. Now, for shits and giggles, I'm going to do the old password. All right? This is the old password. And let's hit enter. Boom. Password is incorrect. Okay, that's a good sign. Let's put the new password. So capital P at 55W0RD2024 and exclamation point. So that's the new password, right? Yep. At 55W0RD2024 exclamation point. Hit enter. And there we go. It's logging in with the new password. Awesome. So the reporting was successful. It's accurate. And logging into uh, the machine that we just changed with the new password is successful. It's logging me in. It's going to take some time, but it's a good thing. And we are logged into the desktop. Awesome. Beautiful. Yeah. Now, I just went blank. <laughs> uh, let's close the spreadsheet up. Let's close this up. Okay, I already ran that process already. We already have the spreadsheet already there. So it's time for, like I said, you need to get home. Uh, you don't want to wait until this process is done to get to look at the spreadsheet. Once it's done, you want that spreadsheet to be emailed to you. So we're going to do the following. We're actually going to create a, excuse me. We actually are going to create a another hash table. Let's declare a variable first. So we're going to do dollar sign and we're going to mail report. You're able to mail, spell, spell right, Bernardo. Uh, mail report equals to at open wiggly brackets. That at is basically stating that we're going to create a hash table. So we're going to hit enter. We're going to hit a tab. And the first thing that we want to do within the hash table is uh, uh, declare our SNTP server. So most likely you might have an internal or an external SNTP services. Uh, if you have an internal one, you assign it here. I have an external one. I'm actually using Mandrill and that's what I'm going to do right now. So I'm going to do SMTP, SMTP server. You're able to call this, call it as is. Uh, and everything that I'm actually using is based on the command that I'm going to use at the end of this hash table. So bear with me. So let's do a single quotations, open and close. Inside here, we're gonna give our SNTP mail address. Uh, mine's is Mandrill. This is for everyone, whoever is using mandrill.com. Okay, uh, another thing that I forgot to do, so I'm gonna go back, hit enter on line 35 because my SNTP needs credentials. I'm actually going to declare a variable called credentials. Hopefully I can spell that right. Equals to get credentials. Yeah, I think I think that's right, right? Yeah, I think that's right. I think that's right, my friend. Yeah. Okay, now back inside the hash table, we are going to declare our port single and close quotations for this i'm using 587 a lot of you might be using another port like 22 uh it's up to you just make sure you apply the correct port or are you using ssl again if you're not you don't need to declare it but for me i am using it so this is basically true hit enter uh i need to declare the credentials that's equal to the variable that I declare up top, which I'm going to add. And now you're going to enter the from to subject body attachment and also a delivery notification option if you want. This is all up to you. Uh, so I'm going to do a from equals to open and close quotations. I'll enter all this stuff uh, soon, but I'm just going to enter all the information that I need within the, the hash table. Hit enter. We're going to do a body, hit enter, and then we're going to do an attachments, open and close. And then the last one is going to be, if I spell it right, delivery notifications option equals to open and close, colon, open and close, and then hit enter. 
uh, and then we're going to close our hash table. Let me move this a little bit here. Cool. Now we're going to fill in all the open and closed uh, single quotations. So from this could be whatever you want. I'm going to do local PC password report at whatever domain you have. Mine is btnhd.com. It, it's going to the following. Boom. Subject. You can add whatever you want. I'll say local computer password status report. I'm going to get really fancy with the subject line. So from here, I'm actually going to get the date of when the email was sent out. So if the report was done today, which is going to be today, the subject line is going to have today's date. So how to do that, you do, I'm going to do the hyphen and I'm going to do, uh, what's the dollar, dollar open parentheses, get date with a parameter of format G and I'm going to close it. Okay. So that's actually going to add today's date on the subject line. It's pretty awesome, right? For the body, let's keep it super simple. Status report on changing the local local PC admin password. Okay. Now the attachment, where's the attachment? The attachment is actually located here. So let's go. I think if you hold the shift and right click on it, it should give you an option to copy as path. It's pretty simple, right? Copy as path. Let's go back into our PowerShell script and then inside this attachments, we're going to um, get in there and then paste it. Boom. Now for the delivery option, we are going to either on failure or on success. Awesome. So we declare our hash table. This is beautiful. And now it's time for us to create the script to send the report. Now to do that, now to do that, let's do this real quick. Now to do that, it's pretty simple. Let's hit enter here. We're going to use the command of send and mail message. And we're going to use at uh, mail report. That's it. Okay. So I am going to run this. Let's run this real quick. We're going to run this line, right? This is where I need to enter my password. I declare my information there. Let's run 36 to 48, which is basically the hash table information. And then we're able to send the mail message. Boom. Oh, what happened? Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Oh, pff. double quotations. No, no bueno. There it goes. So let's run 37 to 48. Let's run that one more time. Excellent. Now let's run 50. And that's it. Now to test this out, to test this out, I'm actually going to log into my inbox. Let's log into my inbox real quick and show you guys. Should have received it. Let's log into my inbox and take a look, see if it came through. Let's see how much we don't. Did it come through? It's probably taking his sweet time. Probably taking his sweet time, which is okay. I wonder if I entered the right password.
Stack. Something happened to my code. I'm fixing it for some reason. For some reason, everything just went haywire. So everything went haywire on me. Give me one sec. Let me just clean this up a bit. That's driving me nuts. Uh, delete. I don't know what I I pressed something and everything just went crazy. Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, everything went nuts. There we go. Yeah, I, I clicked on something and everything went haywire on me. Jesus. All right. Let me just fix this. I don't know what the hell was pressed. All right. Okay. Let me try something. Let me try something real quick. I need to check if the if I got the right information from my man drill. Man drill. Man drill. Let's check if I have. Can I even log in? probably gonna ask me all right let's check my my status okay cool so I do have the right one so let's run it again let's run it one more time let's uh, go back to picture to picture uh, do, do let me grab credentials all right, boom, something happened. Uh, yeah, All right, boom. All right, so let's run this line again. Awesome. That, let's put the password. I'm hoping that's the password. Is that the password? Sugar machine. Let's see if that's the password. Uh, let's run this. Create. Let's run this. Create. Let's uh, go back real quick. And let's uh, log into my inbox. Okay, cool. So I, I just got it. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to show you guys. But let me just open it up. And minimize it so let me show you guys real quick so this is the email i just received it okay this is the from that we added within the powershell script which is awesome uh to whatever this is what we enter for the body within the hash table and this is the attachment so if i open up the attachment it should give me what we had within the local awesome so can you imagine having this script running it at five o'clock, you head out, it hits all the machines, change all the passwords, and then you get this nice little email with the spreadsheet letting you know what was online, what was offline, was uh, if it wasn't successful. Detail status, it actually gives you a nice, um, it gives you nice information of why it did not change and you could just troubleshoot on that. And that's it. And that's it guys, hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode. I will place the PowerShell script uh, within my GitHub so you guys can play around. Uh, the SMTP part is really fancy, it's really cool, especially like I said before, if you need to head out and you just wanna run it, and then when you're in the road, you get that email indication stating that it was done, and you got a nice little spreadsheet telling you what was changed and what was not changed, and you go back the next day and fix those machines that were not able to change. And that's it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode, and I catch you guys on the next one. Peace out. All right. So I always forget how to end this.
I think if I click on this, it should be done. Is it done? 